Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackYear.com, and today we're going to break down the all-new Icon Variant Pro Full Face Helm. Okay, the Variant Pro retails from 350 up to 500. They have a full carbon, right? Like a ghost carbon. That's the $500 one. The solid Rubicon is 350, and the construct graphic, if you will, that we're showing you falls somewhere in the middle of all that, right? This is a striking helmet. This replaced their previous version, which was just the Variant, okay? And they have made some upgrades to this for sure. The Variant was a good helmet. This is simply an evolution and an improvement on that, and they're taking cues from their most current crops of helmets. They really started a directional change with their all-new Airframe Pro that was released a few years back. And now you see trickle-down technology from that helmet goes into each one of the helmets they've been releasing, and that holds true with the Variant Pro as well. 3.55 pounds in a size medium, on our shipping scale here at STG. It is both DOT as well as ECE certified. There are three independent shell sizes used. Extra small and small, share a shell. Medium and large, this is a medium. They're gonna share a shell. Extra large and above uses its own shell. Obviously multiple colors available. Multiple colors available in the shield itself too. They've got some really cool tinted mirrored shields that really amp up the styling of this quite a bit. Has a highly adaptable fit. I think there's 27 different fit configurations available in this. Sizing. I measure 58 centimeters on the money with an intermediate oval head shape. This is a medium. I wore it at my desk. I've not ridden in it in the middle of the corona apocalypse right now, okay? And this really isn't the type of helmet that I would do a lot of riding in. Most of my riding now is track riding. With that said, I've worn a lot of helmets. I would say this one runs true to size. It's got a good comfortable fit, intermediate oval shape for sure. One thing that does stand out with this and a lot of the other helmets in the Icon line right now is it has a rather pronounced on-off effort. And what does that mean? That means when you grab it by the chin straps and you pull it over, it takes a little bit of effort to get it over and you kind of notice it. With that said, once you get it on, it does give you a real good secure fit and sensation from the helmet. So that is the upside of the challenging on-off effort. Shell material here is gonna be a blend, right? It's a fiberglass with some carbon, as mentioned, being used in the shells as well. Okay, so this is not an injection molded plastic shell. Who is this right for? You look at it and from the surface, you know, it might look like a dual sport helmet. Icon is more of a sport bike, you know, a street sport bike company than it is a dual sport company, in my opinion. They designed this helmet to be used on the road. If you look at all the cutouts here in that visor, they are huge to allow the air to flow through it. Unlike a, a moto helmet, right? A moto helmet's gonna usually have less cutouts because the top speeds on the moto bikes are gonna be a little bit less. So you rare, wear a moto helmet on the street and it can really grab a whole lot of wind. This one doesn't do that. I've ridden in the previous version. That one, I actually took that on the street a bit, and I took that one out on the racetrack at one point. And I can tell you that even at racetrack speeds, the original version of the variant, it did pretty darn well in the wind. Certainly, it was noisier because of the peak, right? And certainly, you know, the aerodynamics were compromised a little bit because that's just not what it's built for. This is built for a rider who looks at this and is like, man, this is a badass-looking helmet, and I want it. Features and benefits. The ventilation of this helmet has really been amped up as compared to its predecessor, okay? The vents are all right up here in the forehead and the brow area as well as in the chin bar. The switch for this vent is here in the chin and we'll show you this a little bit closer when I take the helmet apart. It's really kind of cool. It's got like these kind of butterfly wings that pop out to open and close the vent. The intakes for it are going to be here, 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 and here, right? That's gonna flow air up onto the shield and into the face area of the helmet. We have a large intake vent here, two large ones on top. Those are all switchable on and off. We'll give you a better look when we have that visor peak off and we have the interior out. And you can see that a lot like their Airframe Pro, this is going to flow 
a metric shit ton of air. Exhaust ventilation is going to be managed through the diffuser area back here, as well as the neck roll area of the helmet. Noise level. Anytime you have airflow like this, you have a visor peak hanging off the top like this, do not expect this to be a quiet helmet. Glasses compatibility. This one allowed me to slide the glasses in, required a little bit of effort, but once they got in there, they rode exactly where I wanted them to and the glasses rested on the bridge of my nose. So I would say glasses compatibility is high. Fully removable, washable, replaceable interior. Like I said, 27 different configurations available. As I disassemble the helmet, we'll break down and show you exactly how that is possible. Really some cool looks here too, like this cutout here that's kind of blended into the EPS. You know, I don't know if that's really an active part of ventilation or anything, but just really a strong, bold look. The shield. To remove the shield on this helmet, you need to start by removing the visor peak. There is a button here that needs to be depressed. Depress that and then rotate forward. As you're rotating forward, put some outward pressure here on the side plate and you'll hit a certain spot where it just it's almost all the way down and you're able to pop it out. That part seems relatively simple. This is also very flexible. Okay, This isn't a super fragile piece, which is good because it is kind of hanging out there. You know, and from time to time, things do get dropped, things happen. The shield itself. You know, I'm going to say that the whole shield swap on this is okay, right? It, you know, I like what they did there. I like how it's integrated and modular. But when I show you the kind of the effort it takes to pop the shield off, I was nervous that I was going to break it. Raise it all the way into the upward most position. You can see we do have some pretty strong detents here at the bottom. They're going to help that seal up better than the predecessor. All the way up here to the top, and you can see there are some notches cut out here in the shield, and then there is also a tab here that's used for the detents. Once you get it all the way in the upward most position, what you need to do is now get your finger down here and pull outward until you hear that pop. It's just loud and it feels like it takes a fair amount of pressure to get that to release. You know, I, I've done it a handful of times now, we'll do the other side. And I haven't managed to break the tab on the shield, okay? I'm guessing they probably tested, tested that. I just wanted to share how I felt about it, how relevant that is or is not, is up to you. Let's give you a look at it. You can see the gasket that they've got here. Here are the vents. A little easier to see when you have the peak off the helmet. Nice action, multiple detents, feel good, nice quality. To install the shield, need to get it into that position where the cutout drops over the tabs on the shield ratchet and then put pressure right here and just push down to get it to lock in. Repeat the process on the other side. Like so. And rotate that into the downward position. Grab your peak. And if you look at the peak here, very uh, clearly see the tabs that need to line up here with the cutouts in that visor ratchet. Slide it in, kind of roll it around. Right about there is the position where it allows you to slide those in. Kind of cool how everything's modular, right? I think that's a not a bad idea. Just felt like it took more pressure than it should. Push that tongue in and then rotate backwards like so. Before you go out and ride it, I would take your time, double check, make sure everything is good and secure. Raise and lower the shield to verify. That's how you change your shield. Before I remove the interior, I'm just gonna pull this back apart just so we don't damage anything on the helmet. Put it on the helmet donut. I'm gonna leave the shield on because it's just a pain in the butt. This ship's complete with a chin curtain. It's already installed. How it's held in place is the lower portion of the cheek pads has Velcro spanning from front to back. Okay, so I'm going to release that Velcro. There are two snaps on the top of the cheek pad. Get in there and release those as well. Velcro here on the chin curtain. It does seem to hold it in there just fine, right? But there is quite a bit of Velcro used in the interior here. Nice mesh. 
it's kind of contoured so you're able to reach the switch for that vent. We'll show you that in more detail in a second. Here are your cheek pads. You're able to swap these out with different sizes. We'll break that down in the size chart and the listing for the individual replacement parts. To remove the top pad, the top pad is in three independent pieces. You have a center, which has two snaps at the back. You get to the front, and there is a channel here. Kind of slides up in between the EPS and the outer shell. Get your thumb under there, rotate that out. Here is your center pad. The two side pieces have a snap in the front, snap in the rear. They are also marked right hand and left hand to aid in reinstallation. This helmet is compatible with the Icon specific Cena or of course universal Bluetooth devices. I don't know if you're going to be able to get that or not, Caleb. Can you get that right there? It's kind of hollowed out in the EPS, allowing you to install the speakers, then obviously you mount the unit to the outside of the helmet, as you would with any of the other universal devices. EPS of the helmet. You can see right up in the front here, and this looks a lot like that Air, Airframe Pro does. All the hollowing out they've done there in that EPS, it lines up directly with the vents. The vents for the helmet are super close to the eye port, okay? So they're working to bring the majority of the air in right in that vicinity. And then there are channels that span from front to back to enhance the airflow and encourage it moving from front to back. Your exhaust is back here all the way at the rear and then it kind of terminates down here in the neck roll area to allow that to escape as well. There you have it. What do I think? You know, it's well executed. I think they did a nice job with it. The shield change is a little bit wonky, but I might make it a bigger, I'm probably making a bigger deal out of that than it really needs to be. I mean, how often do you really change the shield? You know, this wouldn't be one of those helmets where you'd want to carry a spare shield around and swap it while you're out on a ride, because I think that would be a, just a, you know, more than you would want to get involved in while you're out riding on the street. This is a very specific helmet. It's targeted at a rider that wants a bold look like this. It's a quality piece. It fits well. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments section of this video. I answer all that stuff myself, and I'm here to help you out with your next helmet purchase.